Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new and you want to see more videos from me and hit that notification bell to be notified anytime I upload new videos. So I am back to read version two of the Lover Deluxe album. So we are going to dive right into it. Um, also, right before I start, uh, if you want to see me opening these and showing you the posters that come with them, reading the forward inside the journal, all of that stuff, go and check out the other video I did. I will link it in the iCard and the description below. All right, guys, let's get started reading more of Taylor Swift's journal entries. I love this picture in this one. Okay, here we go. So we've got a picture of her at age 17, 21, and 17. And again, it says this journal belongs to Taylor Swift. Um, and again, I'm pretty sure I showed all of these pictures in the, in the other video that I've linked for you guys. So let's get started. June 2010, for some reason it doesn't... Um, say her age but it's June 2010 and she's written the lyrics to another one of my absolute favorite Taylor Swift songs and it's called Long Live and it says long live the magic we made and bring on all the pretenders because um, one day we will be remembered um, May 17th 2003 age 13 years old Hey, <laughs> to, I love how like she just does like, hey, or hi, or whatever. Like she starts her journals like um, with hey, or whatever. I always was a very like formal dear diary type girl. Um, and I still do, dear diary. But um, I love that she's just like, hey. <laughs> um, hey, today mom and I went to New York. We talked and laughed all the way up and parked in a garage near my voice lesson. We walked to her apartment and we worked on smoky black nights after doing all of her warm-ups. I didn't do it well at first, but she said that the song was ingenious. Cool. After mom and I went to this cowboy western store nearby, um, we got a white shirt that buttons up jeans and a white, a white tee with notes on it. Then we had pizza at a pizza place and walked back to the car, stopping at Tasty Delight, our favorite, in all capitals, favorite ice cream store. Um, again, some of her handwriting is really hard to read, so I, so I might be guessing at some of these words, um, and some of them I have to really, like, look at to make them out. Um, it's funny because her handwriting actually reminds me a lot of mine in some parts where it's, like, part printing, part, uh, um, cursive, and, um, but in some parts she gets a little messy. Um, I think, okay, a favorite ice cream store. Oh, I think it's saying it's kosher. Yeah, it's kosher, non-cholesterol, extremely tasty, dreamy frozen yogurt, and only 40 calories. Uh, um does it get any better than that okay so i recently watched her documentary miss americana and i'm gonna do a whole other video giving my thoughts and reviews on that but i just have to say that one thing they touched upon in the documentary was that she had an eating disorder at one point so it's really interesting to see that even at 13 years old she was thinking about calories like she was saying oh this frozen yogurt's only 40 calories like 
a 13 year old girl shouldn't be like having to worry about like I, I don't know it's just it, after seeing the documentary like I'm pick, picking up on things in here that it's like wow yeah um so does it get any better than that then we went home and got movies you know sometimes I think a lot about what my first kiss is going to be like it's so cute it's going to be great and romantic I'm such a romantic I just dream about looking into someone's eyes and feeling something I've never felt before you know <laughs> so cute I just never was able to put a face to my fantasy but something tells me that my first kiss is really far away from happening because the guys in our school aren't even worth worrying about. <laughs> the guys in our school are not even worth worrying about. They are all in it for one thing. And I think you know what that is, too. <laughs> I guess I'll be okay with without a first kiss xoxo taylor oh my god <laughs> so this one it looks like she was using like um a calligraphy pen and this is june 5th 2003 13 years old hey journal i had to sing at the garden party today so mom and i went to the field and got some of the equipment set up then we went home and I got ready. When we got there, all of my friends were there and they helped set up, kind of. I started my show and in the first three chords of the first song, my guitar pick broke in half and flew out of my hands. There was this huge silence. It was awful. I had to bend over and pick it up in front of everyone. <laughs> And while I was singing, this guy was shouting stuff like, Go on, bitch, sing that country bullshit. Go on, motherfucker. Like, what? Oh my gosh. Um, it was awful. After the garden party, we all went to the Reading Hospital? To visit Nanny. She looks worse every time we go. I sang I used to fly a little more like you and same girl for Nanny and her roommate Penny. Penny has liver cancer and is bald from chemo. All of the nurses loved listening to it. It went really well. Um, yeah, like I can't believe someone was yelling stuff like that at a garden party. Oh my gosh, that's horrid. And to like a 13 year old girl at that. Who does that? Wow. Um, then we went home and I worked on a song called Not One Day. It's okay, but I don't know. <laughs> November 5th, 2004, 14 years in Hendersonville. Hey, yesterday was Friday. And instead of going to the movies or something, I fell asleep. I needed it. This last week was crazy. Okay, so Capitol Records doesn't think I'm ready right now. And I could get a deal right now with them, but not the deal I would want. So on the other hand, there's Scott Borchetta. Okay. Scott Borchetta. Just, just look up uh, Scooter Braun, Scott Borchetta, Taylor Swift feud or whatever. You'll find the story. He's an asshole. Um, okay, so anyways, like Scott Borchetta gave her the chance to start her career. Like there's, I mean, that's great. Like, I don't know if Taylor Swift would be where she is today without him taking her on but then he ended up like royally screwing her over so it's sort of like it reminds me very much of like Backstreet Boys and their manager Lou Pearlman who 
seemed like this great guy. And again, I don't know that Backstreet Boys would be where they are without him. But at the same time, again, like he also screwed them over. He was like creating competition for them. He stole money from them. I mean, like he was into like all kinds of like illegal activity and stuff. So yeah, he screwed them over as well. Um, anyways, so on the other hand, there's Scott Bruschetta, who we met with at Universal. And, you know, I really loved all the stuff he said in the meeting. And he stayed for the whole Bluebird show. And he's so passionate about this project. I think that's the way we're going to go. I want to surround myself with passionate people. I'm not sad about Capital because I don't want to be lost on a big label like with RCA. Uh, November 29th, 2006, 16 years old, back in Nashville. And it says, I don't know what the, what is that? Something base? Something base nine and BB 11? I don't know. I can't make out. I can't make out what that is. It's maybe like media base nine and BB 11. I don't know what that means. Um, Hey, <laughs> so I just got in from Idaho Falls. I did a sold out show. Um, hey, so I just got in from Idaho Falls. I did a sold out show in Oregon. I think that's Oregon. No. I did a sold out show in Ogden, Utah. I'm so bad. I, I, I don't know all the... Um, abbreviations for the states um two nights ago and then another in idaho falls last night it was snowing in both places and freaking cold man it was cold so today we all piled in this huge van and drove to the airport in salt lake city four hour drive and me and mom were supposed to be flying to st louis for for Will Jingle Fest, W-I-L, I think that is, Jingle Fest. But Scott called me at the airport and said, St. Louis is supposed to get 15 inches of snow. They're canceling the show. You have a day off. So we hopped on a flight to Vegas and we're supposed to have a four hour layover, but we found a flight that was just about to leave for Nashville and it was barely full so we ran and caught that one and here I am in my own comfy bed I have tomorrow off so I'm gonna go out to eat with Abigail and for those who don't know Abigail is her high school um, friend oh and I'm dieting again here we go see like this is where I was like okay like she's mentioning eating a lot like dieting and stuff in her journals and so it wasn't a complete shock to me when she like talked about having an eating disorder oh and I'm dying dieting again over the holidays I didn't watch what I ate and man it's so weird how fast I can gain or lose weight it's crazy so I'm going to lose some now Taylor so that kind of like <laughs> Oh, yeah, that when she talks about her weight and stuff, it's like it really hurt. It's it's very heartbreaking because like I've always looked at her and thought like, holy crap, like she's so skinny, you know, and I've I've always sort of like looked to Taylor like I wish I had a body like that. And it and to hear her think like she's gained weight and like is fat or whatever and and has to go on a diet is just it's just crazy to me. 
Um, but it, it also makes me realize that that's again, it's relatable because I, th I think like everyone has struggled with body issues. Um, you know, like learning to accept their body, love their body, love themselves. Like it's just like a constant struggle throughout your life. I mean, even when I was skinny as a kid and in high school, I like, you know, I weighed like 115 pounds. I was really skinny. And even then I was like, oh, my stomach looks fat or like, you know, so it's, it's just, I don't know. It's just something that I feel like women in general, like we all struggle with self-esteem, body issues. And so it, it's, it's just, but it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like it's like so strange for me to hear her say that, even though I can understand, like we all have been there, but when you when you're an outsider looking in like for me it's like holy crap like i would kill to have a body like taylor swift but to think like that she would look in the mirror and think like my stomach's big or whatever is just i, I don't know it's my it's mind-blowing december 2006 white horse lyrics um so that's her song white horse and i'm wondering i can't remember if any lyrics changed or if they're all the same. So let's see. Say you're sorry that face of an angel comes out just when you need it to. As I paced back and forth all this time because I honestly believed in you. Holding on, the days drag on. Uh, realize I should have known, I should have known. That's a little bit different because um, I believe the the final lyrics instead of realize said stupid girl I should have known I should have known. I'm not a princess this ain't a fairy tale I'm not the one you'll sweep off her feet lead her up the stairwell this ain't Hollywood this is a small town I was a dreamer before you went and let me down now it's too late for you and your white horse to come around that's pretty much the same. Maybe I was naive got lost in your eyes and never really had a chance. My mistake, I didn't know to be in love, you had to fight to have the upper hand. I was never exactly what you wanted, now I know. So most of that is the same. Um, chorus, well I had my dreams for you and me, happy ending, now I know. Um, yeah, that's kind of like a lead into the chorus. There you are on your knees, begging forgiveness, begging for me, just like I always wanted to see. Hmm. I think that last part changed in the final song. Uh, but I'm not a princess. This ain't a fairy tale. So I'm going to find someone someday. Or, so I'm going to find someone who might actually treat me well. So that's a little bit different. This is a big world. That was a small town. They're in my rear view mirror disappearing now, so it's too late for you and your white horse to catch me now. December 27th, 2006, 17 years old, Nashville. <clears throat> so I got to check off my first life goal today. My album sold 61,000 copies last week. My goal was to sell 50,000 in one week. We flew by that. How crazy is that? How crazy is this? I'm playing the Wild Horse Saloon tomorrow night, and I'm so excited. All of my friends are coming. Cannot wait. It's going to be a fun show. So I've been home since Christmas. Let's see. Life is pretty good. I'm now obsessed with Law and Order. Completely obsessed. And my album's about to go gold. Haven't kissed a boy in 209 days. Taylor. <laughs> Haven't kissed a boy in 209 days. <laughs> and the part of her saying she's obsessed with Law and Order is funny because... Um, 
she named her cat Olivia Benson after um, Law and Order character. March 17th, 2009, 19 years old. Hi, it's me, the girl who always forgets to write in her journal. <laughs> okay, that is hilarious because I am notorious for forgetting to write in my diary. And then I will have like days worth of stuff to write about. I'm still like, I'm still writing about stuff from last year. <laughs> like, anyway. Oh yeah, her. I just got back from Australia. I was there for two weeks and it was amazing. Gorgeous there. So what else has happened since I wrote? I was on the cover of Rolling Stone. My tour has sold out every venue, including Madison Square Garden in one minute and Staples Center in two. I somehow feel like it's my destiny to roll my eyes at happy couples and resent Valentine's Day. <laughs> Let me repeat that. I somehow feel like it's my destiny to roll my eyes at happy couples and resent Valentine's Day. I also feel like I'm the girl before the one. I'm not the one. I'm the girl you think is the one for you. And when it doesn't work out with me, you meet the next girl and realize she is the one. The one you're going to stay with. I might get married, but I think it's ultimately my fate to light candles and pine away and roll my eyes at happy couples and resent Valentine's Day. How old was she again on that one? 19 years old. That's funny. April 13th, uh, 2010, 20 years old, tennis, Nashville, tennis, Nashville, Tennessee. I can't talk. So I've been obsessing over the new record to the point where it's all I can focus on. I'm majorly stressed and borderline losing it with all these lists and chronic dissatisfaction, perfectionist, perfectionistness. I keep growing tired of songs because I know I've raised the bar and I can beat half the songs. Scott and I had lunch the other day. <clears throat> We were talking about the record and I had this epiphany. I didn't talk in interviews about how I felt about much of what has happened in the last two years. I've been silent about so much that I'm saying on this album. It's time to speak now. Scott freaked out. He loved it. We have a title, ladies and gentlemen. So that was when she did the speak now album which she wrote that entire album by herself amazing album june 17th 2011 21 years old nashville something so unexpected and amazing has happened recently i've become blissfully happy with my life like actually grateful for every second of this day i've noticed this onset for a while but it's really hit me in the last week and especially since I wrote two new songs. I really do need to create in order to live and feel worthwhile, but it's more than just that. I'm happy with my family. I'm happy about this tour. I'm happy that tomorrow morning I get on a plane to Pittsburgh, play a stadium of 60,000 people, then fly home. I'm happy that the next day I'm recording two new songs. I'm happy that I get to meet so many people on the road who make me feel like my music really matters to them. This ridiculous thing happens to me when I'm this happy. I start feeling like karma will balance it all out by making something tragic happen. But I'm trying to just show gratitude as much as I can. Every day, every minute, I'm grateful for being happy right this moment. I think I'm a summer person. 
I'm also a work person. Tour gives me something to pour myself into and a reason to feel okay about sleeping in until noon on my days off. Today I want to, sorry, Today I went to a management meeting and approved slash declined things and then went shopping for Father's Day. Tomorrow it might rain in Pittsburgh. I hope it doesn't. March 2nd, 2012, 22 years in Perth, Australia. So here we are in Perth. It's a beach town on the Indian Ocean and it's beautiful, underlined. It's 85 degrees and sunny. And yesterday I went to, yeah, trying to make out her letters again. Coddle slow back. Sorry if I messed that up any people in Australia. I've never seen water that crystal blue before and white sand. There was this art festival going on. So there were all these sculptures set up on the beach. We laid on we laid our towels out and got tans and frolicked in the water. Okay, the fact that Taylor Swift uses the word frolicked, can we just take a moment? Just take a moment for that. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> After our beach afternoon, we went to this restaurant right as the beat right on the beach called Indiana. It was built in 1910 and looked like an old fancy hotel. It's one of the most beautiful places I've been to with old with old world arches and moldings antique tables and big French doors opening out to view to views of azure blue ocean. The fact, can we just take another moment of silence? Oh, and I mean a Taylor Swift video wouldn't be complete with my cat like meowing like a lunatic. Um, <laughs> Just take a moment for the fact that instead of just saying blue ocean, she says azure blue ocean. Like she's so detail oriented and like meticulous on like painting a picture with her words like. Okay. We sat there for hours drinking strawberry mojitos and eating calamari until I was so tired, I went back to my fluffy hotel bed and slept. I've been thinking a lot about getting older and relevancy and how all my heroes have all ended up alone. Now, this is really crazy because in the song, The Archer, she mentions all of my heroes die all, all alone. So again, I'm wondering if like when she was going through these old journals, like she found, she picked out like pieces from them. Um, how all my heroes have all ended up alone. I wrote a song on the plane ride from Sydney to Perth and the Oh my God, I can't make out her writing at all. And the Appalachian, what? I wrote a song on the plane ride from Sydney to Perth on the Appalachian I cannot make out this word at all. D? Is that a D? Dulcimer? Do, do I bought the days, or sorry, what? 
On the... I bought the days... I am so lost. Okay. I apologize, people. It's really hard to read her writing sometimes. I wrote a song on the plane ride from Sydney to Perth on the Apoloshwan something I bought the day of my flight. I don't know. I bought it because Joni played on... Hmm. Because Joni played on most of her blue record. Um, what? <laughs> I'm so, hold on a minute. Wait, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm understanding. Okay, so it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's some sort of instrument that she bought. And she bought it because Joni Mitchell played this instrument for most of her blue record, is what I'm understanding. I taught myself to play A Case of You anyway. I wrote a song on it called Nothing New, and it's about being scared of aging and things changing and losing what you have. It says, I'm getting older and less sure of what you like about me anyway. And in the chorus, it says, how can a person, how can a person know everything at 18 and nothing at 22? And will you still want me when I'm nothing new? It's a really vulnerable song, but I think it's important to say. Oh, I wish we could hear that song because... That's a song she never released or recorded or whatever. February 22nd, 2014, 24 years old in LA. This week, I've been in the studio with Max and Johan every day. And it has been the most creatively successful and fulfilling time. The first day, Johan just made a really up-tempo drum beat because we decided we needed something up and light. We worked at it for a few hours before I just started singing, shake it off, shake it off. And then the best way I knew how to describe it is that the chorus just fell out of the sky. It ended up being this song about doing your own thing, even though haters are gonna hate and you just have and you just have to dance to your own beat. We all went home and I wrote the first and second verses and brought them in the next day. We wrote this chanty cheerleader bridge that I absolutely love. We spent all day doing vocals and the next day recording background vocals. I think it will end up being the first single and Max said it's his favorite song he's ever been a part of. August 29th, 2016, 26 years old in Nashville. And all she wrote was, the summer is the apocalypse. And I believe that was the, I think that was around the time that the whole thing with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West was going down. And everyone was calling her a snake. And then she decided to like disappear for a year. Um, that's probably why she says this summer is the apocalypse. And that's literally all she said. And that brings us to the end of volume two. And we see some more amazing pictures. There's little Olivia Benson. She's so cute with the pigtails there. Oh my gosh, I love the I love this picture of her with the like teddy bear um hat scarf thing. Like this is one of the things I love about Taylor is how nerdy she is, because like I'm the same way. So that's really cool. Um 
and then we go into the blank pages haha <laughs> blank space lyric reference um, to write in yes and then it comes with um, the poster which as I said I'll link to the video below where you can see like all the posters and everything like that so yes that is volume two stay tuned for volume three I don't know um, if I'll do it this week I might take a break I might read the other two books next week um because I have some other video ideas that I want to do this week as well and um it's going to be a bit of a busy week this week. I think I might be going out tomorrow with Paula. And then the next day is my visit for fingers crossed. Hopefully I will get the job. Um, so I'll be doing my three hour visit and I'll get paid for it, which is great. And um, I'm hoping by the end of it, they'll give me an answer on whether they're hiring me or not. I have a pretty positive feeling that I'll get it, but I don't want to get my hopes up. And then there's Valentine's Day and Alex is taking the day off work so he can have a four day weekend because here in Canada, the Monday is family day. So he is off on the Monday. So um, yeah, so he's going to be home on Valentine's Day and we decided um, to try and like keep costs low this Valentine's Day. So we're not going out to dinner. We are just going to have dinner at home. We're going to make dinner and have a nice dinner together. Um, I think I was originally going to do chicken thighs, but Alex wants tacos. <laughs> so we're going to have tacos for dinner and we are, um, instead of flowers this year, we are doing, um, we found out a place that delivers edible cookie dough <laughs> so I was like oh that sounds really good so uh, our dessert will be uh, edible cookie dough so that'll be interesting um, yeah I don't know what's playing at the movies right now I have to look into that because I'm wondering if we might be able to go see a movie for Valentine's Day as well because we have a gift card for the movie but I don't know so anyways it is gonna be a bit of a busy week so I don't know how many videos I'll get out this week but just stay tuned thanks so much for watching guys bye